Okay, so we are going today to talk about how to um, design and plan and build your home garden and um, grow your own food and fresh food is good. That's what we all want. So that's what we're going to learn how to do today. So there's lots of different ways you can do your garden. You can do it directly in the ground. You can do raised beds out of all different kinds of materials and all different heights and it depends upon your needs. You know, there's a lot of homes in this area of Pottstown that really don't have yards, but that should not prevent you from being able to grow some vegetables. Here's some ideas. Um, this is a very, you know, creatively, purposefully built vertical garden, but you can do the same thing with pallets. Turn them up on your side, line them with landscape fabric, plant vertically if you don't have a yard. You know, just when you're up against the house, do it that way, in a sunny location. This is a spice rack, you know, <laughs> easy as pie. They just grew a little herb garden and a little greens garden right there in the spice rack. These are shoe racks <laughs> lined with, you know, whatever to, to, to grow. And you just so you can be creative. There's a, just because you don't have a yard doesn't mean you can't have a garden. So just kind of keep that in mind. Um, okay, containers. We've talked a little bit about containers. Some of you guys have tried containers. The one thing I would point out with containers, they're fabulous because you can move them around where you need them, you can move them in the sun, there's lots of things you can do with them. But you have to be careful with drainage and vegetables. Flowers are better with containers than vegetables are if you're not careful with your drainage. So you might notice in this particular one, these, but they're actually double stacked. Mm -hmm. The reason is because the top one has holes drilled in the bottom and the bottom one catches the, the water. There's a reservoir there. So you just, if you're going to use, and you can use any container. You know, I've seen it in a welly, you know, a boot. I've seen people grow vegetables in that. You know, you can grow them in old pots. You can do them in new pots. You can do them in plastic bins. You can do them in an old bathtub, an old toilet if you're feeling that creative. You can use any container. You just have to be aware of your drainage for vegetables. They're very, very sensitive to not having wet feet, most of them. Except asparagus. Asparagus loves wet feet. Okay, here's a couple other ideas for you. Uh, window boxes, obviously. Um, the only limitation to window boxes is that you're, you often can't grow large vegetables in a window box because then you can't see out your windows and that's not that great. Uh, indoors, you can do, my daughter lives in um, an apartment in Philadelphia and she has large window cells, so she has a herb garden inside her house in her window cells. Bushes of, of basil, she, it's, it just thrives. So you don't even have to have any space outside to grow something. Um, rooftop gardens, if you have a flat roof, that's a, maybe an option for you as well. Okay, so let's talk about site just for a minute. Now, um, a lot of us talked about mixing our flowers in with our vegetables. I, I highly encourage that for several reasons. First off, it's prettier. It makes your garden look beautiful. And a, vegetable, a good vegetable garden is beautiful all by itself. But the flowers do a couple of different things. They attract pollinators which your garden has got to have. If you don't have pollinators, you don't have vegetables. You don't have the fruit on your plant. So you need the pollinators. But also, they attract um, predator bugs that can destroy the pests that you were talking about that come in there and eat everything on your plant. So it's really good to enter plant flowers. As you're, you're thinking about where you want to put your garden, does it get enough sunlight? Okay, is it in a place that you get eight hours of sun a day? There are very few vegetables that don't need eight hours of sun a day. There are a few that can get away with it. Broccoli is one that can get away with it. Garlic can get away with less. Uh, okay, we talked a little bit about this earlier. How much produce do you want? So you need to think about that when you go to plant. So if you're not going to be willing to give it away and you don't want to store it, don't grow a lot of it. You know, and, and certain plants are more prolific than others. You know, a, a broccoli plant really will provide broccoli for a couple of weeks and that's all. You know, you might get four or five heads off of a broccoli plant. So one broccoli plant, if you, that's all you want, that's great. But if you love broccoli and you want broccoli for a long time, you need to plant two or three broccoli plants. Okay, now this is the thing, and this is where we start talking about where you're interplanting things to make them look beautiful and putting your flowers in. There's some plants that don't go well together because they want the same nutrients. So you don't want to put those particular plants next to each other or in the same place year after year. These are the ones that you do. These ones are good together um, because they attract um, pest control pests that help with the things that attack that thing. These are the ones you don't. This is 
Because so many people grow tomatoes, and so many people grow tomatoes specifically for like spaghetti sauce or salsa, so they grow like a salsa garden or a tomato sauce garden. You have to be really careful because cilantro and cucumbers, which are two things we often eat with tomatoes, they don't like to be planted together. So if you're just doing a small garden because you want to do just a couple of things, don't put your cilantro next to your tomatoes. Even though they go great in salsa, they don't go good together in the garden. So you have to keep those things separate. There are several ways to compost. If you don't have much of a big yard, I'm betting you probably have a garbage can by your house. I have a friend that composts in a garbage can, in a plastic Rubbermaid garbage can with a locking lid. She's gone through with a hammer and nails, and she's hammered holes down the side mm -hmm. in like six lines. And she dumps all of her compost in this can, and the lid locks, and about once a week she dumps the can on its side and rolls it back and forth, and then picks it back up. So if you have room for a garbage can outside of your house, you have room for a compost pile. And the compost, there's nothing better for your garden than your compost. It takes, depending on, what the contents of your compost are, a good, highly rotated compost will be ready to put on your garden in about eight weeks. Um, I like to keep two composts going at the same time. At the gardens, we have three. Because once you've filled one, you don't want to keep adding to it because that needs, now needs to cook down and, and rot and decom decompose so that you, so you can be ready to use it. So you need to have multiple piles or multiple cans or multiple containers so that um, you have to keep adding to that first one and that's delaying your use of that compost. I mean, it's great if you're not ever going to use it, but in theory, we want to use our compost. Now, my rolling dark bin composts much faster than the piles I dump on the ground. It's because it's dark and it's closed. It gets really super hot, so it cooks my compost very, very quickly. And a garbage can, or a big garbage can, would do the same thing. So you, you might get compost in six weeks, especially if you have multiple garbage cans. If you have two sitting side by side and you're alternating, dumping into them, dump into this for six weeks, let it cook, dump into this one for six weeks, and then switch back and forth. So go to the link that's here, and there'll be a listing there for you, and it'll tell you things that you can put in your compost. And, and you need to keep a balance of those things in there, because if you only put in greens, it turns to a liquidy, stinky, mushy mess. So you have to put greens and browns. That's what creates that. If it starts to smell really bad, you're doing something wrong. There's something in there or a misbalance in your nutrients. So you have to, you gotta look up and say, okay, what have I been putting in there? What else do I need more of? But once things have browned and turned into what looks kind of like dirt a little bit, then it's ready to use. Then you can put that up, just spread it right on your garden. When I compost, I need nothing in terms of fertilizer. I use no fertilizer when I compost. Mulching, we talked a little bit about. What the mulching does is it keeps your soil moist, so you have to water less, which is a good thing. And it inhibits weed growth, which is also a good thing, because I weed and weed and weed and weed and weed. And there's just no way around it. If you're in a garden, you gotta weed. Um, you can do, straw really is the best. I think, you know, hay and straw really, I think is the best kind of mulch you can do. Layered newspaper, I, I don't use that in my garden, but I do use that in my garden paths. Um, I put it, I put about an eight sheet layer of newspaper underneath my mulch in my garden paths to keep weeds from coming up through. Um, so anything that's a cold weather plant, you can put in March, early April, no problem. But things like tomatoes and peppers and melons and cucumbers and, you know. Those things about Mother's Day, somewhere in that range. No way. Don't overwater your garden. That, I, that's really tempting to do because, you know, the plants, they need water. Of course they need water. But they don't need as much water as you think. But let your plant tell you what it needs. You can tell. Your plant leaves will start to droop a little bit start to curl under a little bit, that's a sign that your plant needs more water. So just watch your plants. Feel the soil. You can stick your finger down in the soil. If it's down, down where your finger is, they're probably fine. If it feels dry, probably need some water. It's better to water deeply and less often than frequently and lightly. It's not good for the plants to do that. They become dependent on it and then they're not resilient. Soil compaction is terrible for your roots, so you never want to step on your soil. You should never have to till your garden. Once you harvest, you should never have to till your soil. Tilling is not good for the soil. It, it causes it to lose nutrients. So what you want to do is never till your soil. That means never step on your soil. So be really aware of how deep your beds are. If you have to step into it, make it so that you've got a stone in there or something that you step on so you're not crushing the roots of your plants. Okay, so.
So if anyone has any questions or needs to know anything else or uh, just needs a little help, uh, come to our Mosaic website. It's mosaicclt.org. Um, you can also look at my gardening blog, which is Metro Regrow.